Okay, so that's the kit you get with the diesel heaters um, all over eBay. 70, 80 pounds now at the moment, good value. But this one is a five kilowatt. And I'm fitting it with the Ford accessory here from Transit Custom Campus that comes with full description on how to lower the tank, how to fit this. Yeah, that's good. Lower it at the back. You get to the accessory pipe, plastic sort of accessory pipe there for the on the diesel sender. Take the top off, a small bit at the top, take it off, fit this. That's the instructions for the diesel heater. That I can use for lighting or the power board when I get home. So you get the diesel heater itself, that's five kilowatt. That's the ducting that you can put on the front. I'm gonna use a small piece of that. Come out with that there. So the air vents upwards into the vehicle. The base plate below there, exhaust. No, actually that's the uh, air intake pipe, which you put the air intake piece on the end there. That's the exhaust. This goes on the end of the exhaust. That's the fuel pump. That's the main wiring there. You've got the controller there, which is going to go next to the main fuse board in the van. And you've also got a remote. Um, sometimes the batteries need replacing in there. Fuel line. Location clamps. Fuel filter there. That might be okay. Normally they're not that good. I've actually fitted them and they create air leaks, so that's a headache. Clamps, screws, fixing bits and pieces. And an external fuel tank. <clears throat> Excuse me, I won't be using that on this build, as I'm taking from the main tank, but the, this comes with a kit. You can tap into the side. Again, I've heard dramas of those leaking air leaks fuel leaks. I've actually fitted one in a transit custom and got feedback that you're smelling diesel so I think from now on I'm going to go via the fuel tank accessory. Watch it on that. Okay first of all I'm going to drop the tank do the diesel feed work out where the fuel pump will go and then put the hole in the floor of the van drop the Heater in, connect it all up. Okay, drop the fuel tank. Okay, so that's how I've dropped the tank. Axle stand front, rear. I've taken off main fuel pipe in, uh, let the tank run down to about 60 miles in the tank. Still had a little bit of diesel come out when I took this pipe out. out. Maybe it was in the pipe, I'm not too sure. But it's only a quarter of a cup maybe. Uh, disconnected the front bracket, pushed it around. The centre bracket, loosened it at the back, push it round. And again the third hanger bracket, off, off actually at the, this end. And then the back loosen and push them right round. I'm pretty sure there's no need to take them off kind of helps when you put the, lift the tank back up and the sender is just there. I should be able to now get something in and clip the top off that and put the pipe in. Hopefully it's sort of that level which is it's dropped maybe a foot at the back. I've kept it i actually put a bucket underneath at the front there. I don't want to drop it too much because the fuel pipes that go across to the fuel filter, I don't want to put too much strain on those. So let's just see if I can get that pipe on the way it is now. Okay, that's the pipe in and the clip over the top. Just suck basically on the end of the pipe and the diesel's coming out, no problem. So I'm going to lift the tank up slightly now and then fit the diesel heater. And then, well, no, 
make sure the diesel heater works correctly. The pump takes the fuel through and then lift the tank up to its position and connect it back with the three tie straps that I've pushed to the other side. So that's the hole, in the, well, going to be the hole underneath the seat. Taking a bit too much out there, I can put that back much neater once the heater's in. Most of that is covered anyway, you don't see any of it, obviously. Um, so I use a, use a metal nibbler attachment to go from corner to corner to the holes I've drilled there. Which end up being just past, kind of need a hole, and then just past all of these points here. So when you put the plate on, seal it, there's nothing coming back into the cab. <clears throat> and then put the inlet of the exhaust and the fuel line in, lower it down and do everything from underneath. And that's looking from the top. Not much light here, but as a point of reference, there's two seat bolts. And Yeah, two, two seat bolts here, basically. It's about the same distance again to the left of that and in slightly. Another point of reference there, there's a grommet. So maybe an inch or two back from that. Yeah, you should be able to get it from that. And that's the 12 volt feed I'm getting. I'm not too sure if that's on every custom. I don't remember that being there on the last one. But I'll go off that for the power for the pump. So I'm just going to cut that with the hole cutter now. It's a heater ready to be installed. Base plate on, sealer, inlet. Cut that long enough to go to the fuel pump. Air in, exhaust. And clip on there. You've got the live with the fuse. I'll be using my own fuse, so this will need to be cut short. Negative. That goes to the control panel. And that goes to the pump. So basically I've got to put that through the body and use a couple of Wago clips. Clip that on. Yep, so obviously all of this lot through and the one to the pump. So nice helpful Chinese wiring, yellow and yellow. Yeah, lovely. Would be easy if they used different colours, wouldn't it? Anyway, there you go. All done. That's the heater in and working. It's fitted underneath the passenger seat. Again, I'll have something across the front there so I can take off this vent is adjustable where it needs to be facing upwards to keep away from that when I'm tested if that does get warm I'll put a piece of metal or a heat shield there I think it'll be fine though I've gone for the controller on the front above the fridge there so the controller wire for that goes through along here I've tested it it works all good So the switch for the power is on the fuse panel there, the controller here, the heater itself underneath the passenger seat and underneath, obviously from the passenger side there is the outlet of the heater on the side of the van there. the underside where the heater inlet, outlet and fuel comes through. The air intake there and the fuel filter and the pump itself just in front of the fuel tank 
it's all zip tied up. The pump is at the angle it needs to be up to operate. I think it's 20 degrees it needs to be facing upwards for the fuel to pump through correctly. All of the yellow on the clips is um, underbody wax to stop the clips rusting but that's all of this stuff you can keep your eye on the filter change all of this is replaceable but the pump itself is uh, under this the heater itself is under the seat so no problem I'm happy with that it's good install everything that needs to be is out of the way of the elements um, I looked before actually in the rain when it was absolutely peeing it down and all of that in there where the pump and the filter is is dry most of this is um, so the air filter air intake there facing downwards so if there any, is any water getting anywhere near it it won't go up into the heater itself so yep transit custom under seat Chinese diesel heater install it's a five kilowatt heater on the way home I'll put some fuel in uh, give it a good test I've got a heat gun to measure the outlet temperature and how quick it heats the van up current temperatures around about 10 degrees so hopefully normally within five six minutes you can get up to 15 20 so all good